that to the Capricorn F5. And I want to do like a discussion about Haley Diggins. Um, I got these uh, graphics side by side. And the one on the left is Danica Patrick. And the one on the right is Haley Diggins. So I'm going to kind of compare stats for their first, for the first few races in their Xfinity Series career. So what it's going to take for Haley to get up to the Cup Series? Well, it's not about duplicating Danica Patrick's results. It's saying, hey, how do you take an underfunded car to the top 15 and then elevate it to the top 10? So when you look at the lift on Danica Patrick's, race tracks the first time around yeah she was not that good so <laughs> I'm not gonna show you how many laps she completed per race along with why she got that DNF so just to start in the finish Daytona was 15th but I knew once Danica was settled in she just rode around and just didn't want to get into a crash, but unfortunately, she got into one, and she finished 35th. And then the next few races, it was hell, man. She was in the 30s, like in a high-tiered race car in, or high-tiered race team in junior motorsports, which are built by... The Earnhardts, so, especially Dale Earnhardt Jr. So, you, if you're going to perform, you got to perform under Dale Jr., you know. He gives you the tools and the equipment to give you what you got and just, just learn your races as you learn from your mistakes and yeah, and when you finish in the 30s or qualify in the 30s, well, you have to look at the whiteboard and say, hey, how can I get better? You know, and yeah, and basically, this was Danica Patrick's part-time schedule, and yeah, she didn't see much action until loud and New Hampshire of race 16 and didn't get any better. That's why I believe her only her only strengths were the high speed tracks, you know, and I mean for the qualifying it's better. Look at uh, Fontana and Charlotte. 14th, 18th. She knew she'd have speed, but yeah, she just um, a lot of the veterans passed her in a short run and then drove away from her in the long run. And yeah, I didn't watch any of Danica's 2010 Xfinity races, but I can tell that I don't have to watch YouTube videos to see. Oh, where is she struggling? Or if she had an onboard camera, where do the fan, race fans that are watching in their smartphones in today's world see? And that's basically what you'll see in Haley Deegan's races, like later in the year. NASCAR, the NASCAR.com app. I mean, Haley Deegan has the funding to actually show race fans her onboard camera and it's right to the cockpit and see her hands moving and all that. Yeah. So I think we're done with the Danica Patrick stats from 2010. So let's go over to Haley Diggins' seven races that she's done so far in the Xfinity Series. So Las Vegas 20th finished 13th and 
it's basically paid off in their three years worth of the truck series where see the Nexel, but I heard a lot of social media nerds say, oh, she'll adapt to the Xfinity series as well, but that's not always the case. Her only good result is Las Vegas. That's it. Otherwise, Daytona, that was a crap shoot. Atlanta ran out of fuel late in the race. But her spotter should have told her, hey, save some fuel, save some fuel. And, or come to pit road while well, pit road's closed. She didn't do that. She got a bad result out of it. And then once again, the Las Vegas 15th. Phoenix, she didn't do that good. She finished 33rd, 33rd. Austin, Texas, 35th. So you see, 23rd. It was not indicative of where she ran, but she ran around drivers that are not Wranglers in the Xfinity series. Just those road course ringers. And yeah. That's her second best finish of the year. So, and then Richmond was where I thought to get a top 20 finish, but yeah, Electrical Gremlins got her in. She was nine laps short of the finish and she got a DNF. So, <sighs> And then, you know, what do, what do most YouTubers do? Okay. So as a YouTuber, when I'm a race fan, I root for Carl Larson and Chase Elliott on Sundays. But when it's the lower series, maybe Carson, Carson Hosevar, but he's in the Cup Series right now. But only Haley Deegan, Brandon Poole. But I, I'm not going to keep in touch with Brenda Poole for this season. But, but for Haley Deegan, <laughs> to improve, she has to compete with Brenda Poole. They got similar equipment. Like they run around each other a lot in the top 20 or top 25. And yeah. So. I'm not going to give a grade on Haley Deegan just yet, but this is like the first time Haley has had to, you know, be in a race team that's underfunded, doesn't have the resources like a Stuart Haas, RSS, Ryan Sieg Racing, and all that. I kind of remember those in the only two Ford operated teams in the Xfinity series that can compete, you know? And Haley doesn't have her right now, but it's only six races and she is last among the drivers that have run all the races. And I expect it out of her, but in my opinion, you know, if she gets up the cup, I might not root for her like I did when Danica was in the Xfinity series, I read for her a little bit, but I didn't make YouTube content of her because I didn't f feel it was necessary and the didn't want to do it for views, didn't want to do it for subscribers and all that. Just quality comments and say, hey, I know, I know you like female drivers, but do you have a fair assessment of who Danica and Haley are as people, you know, and people can get off tangents of Danica and Haley and their results in NASCAR and there's just more coming to streams in general and yeah, I don't want to mention it, but Haley's been when I see her YouTube notifications, or when I see not a notification of seeing, oh, Haley Deegan, she ran terribly. 
or she did well or all that but yeah she's probably a little bit obsessed with social media a little bit come like Danica did Danica doesn't do much YouTubing or Facebook whatever that is and I got to say the race, race fans are right she has to get out of YouTube just kind of suspend her account a little bit but she doesn't have to be like a racing journalist to know what NASCAR is in their landscape but yeah I'd rather see her just being her a racing simulator and just logging laps that's all and I know she's doing it but you don't see it behind the scenes and you guys don't see how many hours she's logged in into her YouTube or Facebook time versus hey you gotta do your eight hour shift between visit the race shop work on the car setup do the race simulating or go to PR relations and go to sponsor meetings or team meetings and all that probably that's what Haley wouldn't want to do but but so the past decade in the 2010s decade is probably different from the 2020s because in the 2010s there wasn't that much competition a lot of bushwhacking and less regular full-time Xfinity drivers in the series and Danica had an easy 10th place in the 2012 season and Haley this is Haley's season to shine but 29 out of 29 is quite competitive but for her she needs to step it up she could probably get into top 25 but 20th is a stretch she's not gotten to a good start already but <sighs> so, I feel exhausted already at talking about Haley and Danica in the same sentence but we'll just see halfway and see where this goes so I make half a car out of five hope you all have a good evening and a happy Easter peace out